ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय I would like to speak on a verse from the Srimad Bhagavatam. The chapter is entitled Divinity and Divine Service. El capítulo se llama Divinidad y Servicio Divino. Divinity refers to God. Divinity refiere hacia Dios. There is a Sanskrit word divyam. Hay una palabra sánscrita divyam, which means transcendental. Quiere decir transcendental. Or divine. O divino. And Godhead is the last word in divinity. How do you say Godhead in Spanish? Godhead. Sis. Okay, the Dios is the last word in divinity. God is the last word in transcendence. God is the last word in transcendence. Last night, I was explaining the name of God, Adhokshaja. Repite. Adhokshaja. So Adhokshaja means transcendence personified. That person who is beyond the range of our material senses. La persona que es más allá de percepción de nuestros sentidos materiales. So that is divinity. Eso se llama divinidad. And divine service means rendering service to that divine personality. Y servicio divino quiere decir cuando uno está ejecutando servicio a esa personalidad divina. That process is known as bhakti yoga. Ese proceso se llama bhakti yoga. Yoga means to link. Yoga quiere decir vincular, conectar. To connect, yes. And bhakti means by service, loving service. Y bhakti quiere decir servicio amoroso. So the scene of this particular chapter Entonces, la escena de ese capítulo en particular is the sages of Naimisharanya. Es que los sabios de el santo lugar, Naimisharanya, five thousand years ago, hace cinco mil años, they had begun a sacrifice. Ahí empezaron un sacrificio. They were going to do it for one thousand years. Y ese sacrificio va a durar mil años. For the benefit of the people of Kali Yuga. Y eso estaban haciendo para el beneficio del ser humano de la época de Kali Yuga. The official beginning of the age of Kali is the disappearance of Krishna. Just a few days ago, we celebrated Krishna's appearance. But there is also Krishna's disappearance. And that marks the beginning point of the age of Kali. The age of quarrel, hypocrisy, and confusion. So the sages of Naimisharanya, headed by Shaunaka Rishi, felt very compassionate for the people who would take birth in the age of Kali. 
Él se sintió mucha compasión para la gente, para el ser humano que va a nacer durante esta época de Belén. And for their thousand-year sacrifice, they chose to hear Srimad Bhagavatam. From Sutta Goswami. Because he was present at the original recitation. And they asked him six specific questions. So their first question was, what is the supreme occupation? And therefore, the first word of today's verse, dharma. Dharma. Repite palabra dharma. dharma. So Prabhupada translates dharma as occupation. Dharma means that which actually sustains you. And then the next word, svanushtita. Repite por favor palabra svanushtita. This word indicates that everyone's occupation is not the same. Because in terms of human society, not all men are created equal. We take our birth according to our previous activities. Some pious, some impious. Those born with more pious activities are born more equal than those born with a background of impious activities. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna explains that he is the creator of the caste system. So, according to our karma, we are born with different natures. And they are categorized as four. Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Shudra. And their symptoms are outlined again in Bhagavad Gita. This is not describing one's particular family. We are talking about a person's individual nature. Their inherent inclination. And how they actually work. That's why Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Brahma Karma Swabhavajam. This is how the Brahmana works. Or how a Brahmana acts. 
And then he describes how a Kshatriya acts. And a Vaishya. And a Shudra. And in Srimad Bhagavatam, Narada also gives an analysis of these four Varnas. And also gives the occupational duties of woman also. But the main thing to understand is that these are how a person is inclined to work. But regardless, everybody still has prescribed duties. Therefore, the next word, pumsam. Repeat it, por favor, palabra pumsam. Means a human being. Animals don't have dharma. They only have four things. Animals only have four things. Eat, sleep, sex, fight. A human being has much more things to do. Now the next word, Vishvaksena. Repeat it, por favor, palabra Vishvaksena. This means God. The Supreme Being. Then the next word, Katasu. Repeat it, por favor, palabra Katasu. Katasu means the message. Last night we were talking that God is a person. And just as every person has something to say, God being a person, He also has many things to say. Just read Bhagavad Gita. He has so many hundred things to say in Bhagavad Gita. So, the next word um, that's important, Utpadayet. Which means something is produced. And another important word in this verse, Ritim. Please, uh, uh, por favor, repite palabra Ritim. Ritim means attraction for something. A businessman has attraction for gold, money. A womanizer has attraction for woman. A musician has attraction for musica. Man has attraction for woman. Woman has attraction for man. Everybody has some kind of attraction. Because we're persons. So, Sutta Goswami is explaining in this verse. It doesn't matter what you do. Whether you're a man or a woman. Brahman, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Shudra. Whatever you may be. You should be asking yourself. 
Am I becoming attracted to the message of God? Because we have to understand something. We are prisoners. Some people think that this material world is a place of enjoyment. But our existence actually proves this is not the place of enjoyment. At least Krishna says, this material world is not for enjoyment. No, in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna uses a very significant word. Dukalayam. Dukalayam has only one meaning. Suffering. And he uses another word. Ashashvatam. That even if you think you are happy, because that's what Maya does, Maya kicks you, and you think, oh, that's good. Please kick me some more. That's what Maya is very expert. Oh, you like my kicking? I'll give you some more. Come here. But even if you think you're enjoying, you cannot enjoy for long. Again, you have to change. Just like we go on vacation. And we go to some exotic place and we're very, very happy. Especially the children, they go and play on the beach. And they're building castles. Castles made of sand. Then the mother and father discuss. Time to go. And the father smashes the sand castle. <laughs> Vacation over. Now you have to go back. Now you have to go to school. No more vacation. God is the same way. Yesterday I was in that Trump Tower. But for God, that's a sand castle. One day God will say, Thump on Trump. Thump. Thump. Trump. Maharaj Trump. Yes. His day is coming. So this material world is a temporary place for suffering. So since this world is actually a prison, the idea should be to get out. Not to remain in the prison. The goal of life, human life, is to become free from the prison. Therefore, Prabhupada's magazine means back to Godhead. Back to Godhead means get out of the prison. To become free. So Sutta Goswami is telling the sages. 
whatever we do, lo que sea, lo que hacemos nosotros, it should be for achieving that liberated position. Debe ser para adquirir esa posición de liberación. And that is the message of Godhead. Y esa es el mensaje del Señor Supremo. The message of Godhead is, please come back to me. El mensaje del Supremo es, por favor, regrese a mí. Krishna says it in Bhagavad Gita. Krishna dice en Bhagavad Gita. In chapter 4 he says, if you understand me. En capítulo 4 él dice, si tú me entiendes. If you understand my birth and activities, you can come back to me. If you can remember me at the time of death, you come back to me. If you serve me throughout your whole life, you can come back to me. And Prabhupada, He is Krishna's salesman. Él es de Krishna. Prabhupada is selling Krishna's message. Krishna, uh, Prabhupada, está el de Krishna. Prabhupada is saying, chant 16 rounds. Dice, Cante 16 Every day. Follow strictly the four regulative principles. And you can go back home, back to Godhead. The final line of this verse by Sutta Goswami. Shrama Eva Hi Kevalam. Repite palabras. Shrama Eva Hi Kevalam. Now, we should all know another Kevalam. Hare Nama Eva Kevalam. That is our religion. Our religion is not Hindu. Our religion is Hare Nama Eva Kevalam. That is our religion. To always chant the holy name. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. We are not the international society for veganism. We are the international society for Krishna consciousness. Krishna was not a vegan. Our movement is all about chanting and preaching the holy name of Krishna. Don't get sidetracked. Stay focused. So this verse is saying, remember, you're going to be doing so many things throughout your life. Especially us householders. Especially those who don't live in the temple. We're going to be having to do so many activities and duties. But don't forget. You should be developing an attraction for the message of Godhead. The message of Godhead is to come back to Krishna. That's why we join this movement. Otherwise, Shrama Eva Hi Kevalam. 
If you are not building an attraction for the message of Godhead, you are wasting your time. You may be very busy. You may be very, very important. But you're not going to go back to Godhead. Just like my favorite example, Mr. Bill Gates or Mr. Donald Trump. They have so much money. They have so much fame. So much power. But the day will come. They will hear a knock. Mr. Trump. I am Yamaraj. Time to pay your bill. And he has to leave his tower. And Mr. Gates has to leave behind a Microsoft. Bye bye. Come with me. And I will punish you. Shrama Eva Hi Kevalam. You did not strive for the message of Godhead. Mr. Trump himself even said once, if there is a God, I'm screwed. Because he knows he has done many, many sinful activities to become Mr. Trump with that stupid hair. <laughs> but he thinks there's no God, so what does it matter? But if there is a God, Punish. Thump. 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 So, we should remember whatever I'm doing, is it helping me to become attracted to the message of Godhead? Am I becoming more attracted to chant the holy name? Or am I sleeping in Narantara's Bhagavatam class? Is my bead bag somewhere in the drawer and I don't know where my bead bag is? Am I more interested in watching the novella instead of reading Bhagavatam? These are the hard questions you have to ask yourself. Am I becoming attracted to Krishna? Or is Maya slowly and slowly Just a little bit of Maya. Just, just, how about just a little bit? Nobody knows. Just a little bit. Come on. Come on. Come on. So, 
Make sure that you are seeing your attraction for the message of Godhead is increasing. And your attraction for Maya is decreasing. And if one day you wake up and you're driving in your car and you realize oh my god I am in Maya just call out Krishna's name just stop wherever you are and cry out to Krishna Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare.